Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I am your host, Daniel Short. Today is Saturday, May 16th, and unbelievable games last night. Oh my goodness. Anybody watch the NBA playoffs? Who did not watch the NBA playoffs last night? I, honestly, I was I was switching through channels. So, uh, But anyways, it was amazing finish and a really just kind of sad finish as well. I mean, I didn't really know who to pick in the Atlanta Hawks-Washington Wizards game. That's the game I'm talking about. Um, you know, cause I'm really rooting for golden state right now. That that's, that's the team I wanted to win at all. Uh, so when I was watching, I was just flipping through and, and, you know, I saw I was getting closer and closer towards the end and so decided to stick through it and unbelievable finish. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Paul Pierce and to know that your season ends now, we don't know they would have won in overtime cause the game would have just gone overtime that three point, but to know that your season, your entire season ended on literally point one seconds that's it a tenth of a second and your season's over with had it just been just a little bit sooner just one point zero point one seconds sooner we would have they would have gone over time and possibly could have won the game against the hawks and extended uh, you know had a game seven later on uh, it, it was just an incredible game and also the uh, you know uh, the Warriors winning last night to end, you know to, uh, to beat excuse me I can't even talk right now uh, to end up beating uh, the Grizzlies to take it uh, the series and, and and move on just it was it was crazy it was crazy so uh, you know I thought I'd just add that up here um, excuse me just doing that okay anyways uh let's move on we got a lot of college football news to talk about we also have some uh nfl news mini camps have uh, i thought they just ended but I, I just realized that some of them haven't even started just like what just now started this week uh was the titans the san diego charge my own team i, I, I don't know i assume that they already had it uh the chargers um and a few other teams, and some haven't even started as well. So uh, those will all happen in the coming weeks. And uh, but how about Zach Mettenberg getting ready, taking on Marcus Mariota? And it was I don't know if you guys saw some of the you know the quick throws Mariota was doing, looking spot on over there. So it was Dorio Green Beckham. It's going to be an interesting off season and preseason preseason uh, heading into the regular season for the Tennessee Titans, and of course. Big team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jameis Winston. We'll, we'll talk about all of that coming up. But first, we're going to talk about some college football news, and that is with Auburn. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. If you're a huge Auburn fan, uh, and a little bit worried, a little bit worried. They've lost multiple transfers this offseason, and now including another two defensive backs have decided to transfer in defensive back Cameron Melton, who took to Twitter to announce he was decided that he decided to transfer. Um, uh, I thought I had the quote, apparently do not. And also in addition to Melton, uh, Auburn head coach Gus Malzahn confirmed that Derek Moncrief and, uh, Joe Turner are all exiting the football program as well. This is what he had to say, quote, Cameron, Derek, and Joe have decided to transfer and pursue playing opportunities elsewhere. We thank them for the time at Auburn and wish them well in the future. Now, Derek Moncrief was the only one out of those three that saw, Playing uh, that had playing time in 2014. That was the main reason all these guys are now transferring. Uh, he, he came in as the number one JUCO safety. Uh, that's a transfer, uh, junior college transfer uh, safety in the nation, and he played all 13 games uh, coming to the Tigers in January of 2014. So, and this is what he also had to say: "Saying quote, I came in as the number one safety in the country, and things are just not, uh, and things just didn't go well from there. Uh, but Auburn was a good place." I, I just want to thank them for everything, for them recruiting me. I wish them the best of luck. Uh, according to Moncrief, Auburn has restricted him from transferring to any team in the SEC, as well as any team on the Tigers' non-conference schedule over the next two seasons. That means uh, he, w- he can't transfer to Louisville, Jacksonville State, San Jose State, Idaho, Clemson, Arkansas State, Louis- Louisiana Monroe, Alabama a and um, The paper also wrote that Moncrief stated he'd like to play for another Power 5 program, possibly in the ACC, the Big Ten, or Pac-12. Uh, and for the other two, and, and Cameron Milton and Joe Turner, um, 
they have not released where they would like or the you know the options that they would want to go to. But uh, for Moncrief, I'm I feel a little bit disrespected a- as a Big Twelve fan. I mean, I'm, I like all the other conferences as well, but as a TCU fan, um, hello, you were missing the Big Twelve. That that is also a Power Five program. But he said in his quote that he is just looking right now as the ACC, the Big Ten, and the Pac-12. I feel a little hurt. I feel just a tad bit hurt that he's not thinking about a Big 12 school and mainly TCU. Uh, I mean, it'd be huge. It'd be huge to have him. Uh, I believe he would be eligible for this. Oh, let me look, let me read here. He'd be a senior. Uh, he hasn't graduated yet, so I don't know if he would actually be eligible Uh this upcoming season to transfer unless he goes to the FCS level. But as he said, he wants to go to a power five. He's not going to drop down from anything less than that. So he might have to sit out his senior year, but then he would still have one year of eligibility, I believe. So uh, we'll just have to see. But the biggest transfer of them all, and we'll, we'll talk about a few later down, uh, is this one. Notre Dame, former Notre Dame quarterback Everett Golston is expected to announce his decision this Monday, the 18th, he is saying, I'm making my decision where I plan to go. Uh, this is citing the source with knowledge of, of the situation. The Palm Beach Post is reporting that former Notre Dame quarterback is expected to decide Monday at which school he will spend his final season of college uh, eligibility. And in case he was sleeping under a rock, Golson was suspended in 2013 by Notre Dame over academic uh, misconduct. Uh, he will graduate from South Bend tomorrow, uh, meaning he has, you know, complete eligibility for 2015, uh, and, and that'll be it. But, you know, some of the schools, they, they I believe I saw a report that said uh, South Carolina is out, that he can't transfer to South Carolina. Or, or Oh, no, it was uh, head coach Steve Spurrier said he was not interested in Everett Golson, which – if I was Golston, knowing that's my hometown, I'm from the exact same city as where this college is at, and you know that was a possibility. Especially because, I mean, I guess he feels confident in the quarterbacks he has. If, I, I don't know from what I've seen from South Carolina, I'm not really confident that any of those quarterbacks are better than Everett Golston. What he can bring to the table, especially how determined he is, uh, as he as he felt disrespected from Notre Dame. I feel like he's he's gonna wh- whichever team he goes to. They're automatically, you know, a dark horse. Now, if he somehow ends up at Alabama, that's not a dark horse team. That's, you know, somewhat of a favorite already. Uh, but, you know, South Carolina, that's not really looking at a, as a playoff team. But that would just immediately improve that team. So I believe any team he goes to is, is going to take a huge step in, in, in making the playoffs. Uh, not a guarantee, of course, but he's going to be one of the most motivated guys on the field this entire year and ready to prove something now of course he can't go to texas that is eliminated as notre dame has blocked him from going to any schools notre dame will play as well as um oh who else did they say a majority of the sec teams he couldn't go to um so that took out texas as they you know notre dame and texas open up the 2015 season to face each other it's gonna be interesting um i know florida is a possibility they're also getting a transfer in uh, Luke Del Rio, the the, the son of a uh, other Del, Del Rio, Jack Del Rio, the head coach or coach or whatever in the NFL, um, he's transferring. I, I mean, I know he was at Oregon State, then he transferred to Alabama. He's now transferring to Florida. Uh, Florida lost that uh, Morning Wegger dude, whatever his name was. He's gone from Florida, so they you know they kind of swapped over there. Um, but if Golson goes there, I mean, Florida has a now a huge stable of quarterbacks there because you got Trey uh, Trey on Harris over there who was the starter last season you got freshman Will Greer and then if you add in Everett Golson I mean obviously Golson is going to be the starter but um that, that takes huge blows to those two guys and Trey on Harris and, and Greer um but I don't really know I've, I've been trying to look for reports who seems to be the favorite now especially now that he's reported that he's making his decision this Monday you know is there a clear cut favorite? Has he, you know, has he truly already decided? That's why he's saying Monday, or is he just waiting a couple of days to finish out some things and then make his decision to see where everybody's going to be at? I don't know. Again, I, I, I would like him to. 
I know I said on my show last week that I didn't want to go to Florida State, but Florida State would be a solid option for him now. Just really thinking about it. I kind of just winged it last week. Now, really thinking about it, Florida State would be a solid option for him. But I don't know. Florida. Oh, yeah. I would do, now remember Florida State was uh, was the favorite. Was the favorite now. Uh, I believe that came out a few days ago that Florida State was now the favorite for Everett Golson. Could be the spot. Could be the spot for him. Another transfer. Well, actually not a transfer. It was reported that Michigan wide receiver slash defensive back Dennis Norfleet had been dismissed by new head coach Jim Harbaugh. A day later, a report surfaced that he had just been suspended. In a post on his Instagram account Thursday night, Norfleet apologized to University of Michigan fans, alumni, and current and former Michigan teammates. Uh, he did not offer any specifics regarding what he's apologizing for, although he did say that everything that he will be okay. That's what he has to say in his in, in his post. I've been crying so much, I have no more tears to give. I just want to give an apology to all the Michigan fans, Michigan alumni, last but not least, my team. We've been through it all. We've had the same goals that we wanted to reach, but I've been talking to God. Everything is going to be all right. For those don't who don't know what's going on, trust me, uh, I will be okay. Things happen for a reason. Um, so we don't really know He's, whether he's suspended or not, or suspended, dismissed, whichever one happens to be. Um, we don't have any of the facts of what, what's going on in his situation. Nothing's been, you know, released. Nothing's been told to anybody uh, why this is happening. Of course, that's why I even put, you know, for those who don't know, everything. I will be okay. We'll just have to see. Have to see. But interesting report uh, from them. Last Friday, Michigan State wide receiver Andre Sims Jr. graduated with a degree in journalism. And then four days later, the school announced that the wide receiver had been granted a release from his Michigan State scholarship and that he plans to transfer elsewhere to finish out his collegiate career. And then also no reason was given why he plans on transferring. Uh, But because Sims will be a graduate transfer, as long as he enters a grad program not offered by Michigan State, he will be eligible to play immediately in 2015 if he opts to go to another FBS program. If he goes to FCS, then obviously it doesn't you know, matter. He can go uh, anyways and, and, and play right away. Uh, he was a three-star member of the Spartans' 2011 recruiting class coming out of high school in Georgia and was rated number 63 overall receiver in the country by Rivals.com. During his time at East Lansing, Sims totaled 13 receptions, 104 yards, and a touchdown. He also returned 27 punts for 224 yards, which averaged 8.3 um, per return. Now, obviously, just 13 receptions in the three years. Well, I guess it, he's a senior. He graduated his four years. So in four years, he's only had 13 receptions. Um, I believe after if you've had uh, two years and you only have 13 receptions or whatever it was then before that in two years, um, that that should have been a sign to just go ahead and transfer. Now, Michigan State degree, obviously really high, so I can understand that if that was your main goal in the first place, but playing time, that's what you need. You shouldn't have waited until your last chance as a senior to then transfer. Um, We'll just have to see what he does from there. Another transfer is Oklahoma running back Keith Ford is decided to transfer. He was suspended, indefinitely suspended in March, and he also broke his leg in a win over Tennessee last September. Um, in two seasons as a Sooner, Ford played in 18 games with three starts, rushing 86 times for 503 yards and six touchdowns while catching 11 passes for 140 yards and one touchdown. Um, being from Houston, uh, he decided or he decided he mentioned that Texas A&M, which is just a little bit south of uh, Houston, uh, as a possible destination. But his dad noted that the list could grow as a transfer process shakes out uh, and didn't really decide, but had some issues. And obviously with Oklahoma's stable of running backs, which is probably going to be one of the, the best in the Big 12. I don't know. TCU has an argument there, uh, but, you know, I don't want to be biased or anything. So Oklahoma, you know, Samaj P. Ryan, you know, could win the Heisman uh, this upcoming season if he repeats what he it, it, incredible freshman year uh, and how unstoppable he was, unless until he played TCU, of course. <laughs> um, and also that you know they have Joe Mixon, 
uh, a guy who had some trouble, but is 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 looking like he, he's fixed his path, his way, and is, is on the right path now uh, to really make an impact finally for Oklahoma. And I believe they have another running back out there. So I mean, they have stable of running backs at Oklahoma, and Keith Ford, who was, I believe he was really good, and I believe he missed uh, the TCU game, uh, and, and I was really excited for that. I, I, and I was like, you know, good, we don't have to play him. Um, but you know, an injury that happened to him, the problems he has been ha- having, uh, is decided to get new scenery. Texas A&M would be, I don't want to see a great spot for him because we've seen the troubles A&M has had over the past two, three years, um, with guys getting, you know, caught up in the wrong things. But I mean, if he, if he's past that and, and he also said that the, the coaching over there with a uh, coach Gundy, I believe the running backs coach or the offensive coordinator, whatever, uh, was not really the right, you know, fit for him after he, what he thought was because when he originally committed and, and, and attended Oklahoma, he said that was the reason he he was going there. Now he says, you know, it just wasn't as a great of a fit that he previously thought. Um, so that's another reason why he was also transferring. But I really believe it's probably because, you know, he's not going to get a whole lot of playing time. Um, especially, you know, we still didn't know what the suspension, how long it was going to be and what it was going to do to his season. Uh, also, now moving on, college football, the playoff committee, or not the committee itself, but looking for new homes. You know, there, there's a bidding process. We're supposed to find out um, probably within this upcoming week or the next. They said late May we will find out who are going to be the bidders, or not the bidders, but the winners of the 2018 through the 2020 um, college football championship game, where it's going to be hosted at. Jacksonville, they thought about it. They were in, and now they are officially out. The city that once hosted a Super Bowl thought about placing a bid for the future college football playoff championship game, and its 2018 through 2020 rotation is now backing out, at least for right now. Uh, according to a report, the Times Union, the Jacksonville Sports Council has decided to hold off from placing a bid as a as the cost of hosting a game continues to rise. Now, Brent McMurphy of ESPN.com reported via Twitter that Detroit plans to enter that plans to place a bid, excuse me, uh, for one of the ch- three championship games in the upcoming bidding process uh, again through the 2018 and 2020 uh, games. And uh, apparently the Detroit free press suggests Detroit is aiming for the 2019 game. Now I love Ford field, by the way, I, I truly do. Now, whether Detroit is uh, the best city for a lot of tourists to go, probably not. But think about the economic boost it would bring them. So it it'd probably do some good to, for them to host one. And obviously, they got a, a great spot. I love that stadium. I, I truly do. Um, so now that Detroit is in contention for the college football playoff, now it increases to nine cities from which, uh, you know, they whoever... <laughs> wins, I guess, uh, gets to choose to host the sites for 2018, 2019, and the 2020. These are uh, the cities, Atlanta, Charlotte, Houston, Miami, Minneapolis, San Antonio. I'd be excited if they get one of them and Santa Clara. Excuse me. The teams that are now out, of course, are now Jacksonville, who, did, you know, they just reported they're out. Indianapolis, Pasadena, New York City, and Orlando have all backed out, um, mainly probably because of price and, and waiting uh, for later on. But out of those, if, if if I had to make the decision, and also for you guys on tw- uh, on Twitter and listening right now, uh, let me know who you guys would like to see out of those. If you had to pick three cities, it didn't matter which year, if I had to pick three cities, obviously San Antonio would have to be one. Atlanta, since they're going to get their new stadium, what, by 2017, have them have one. Lastly, hmm. Miami. Let's give it to Miami. Give it to Miami. So Atlanta, San Antonio, and Miami. Obviously, I want San Antonio 2018, then Atlanta in 2019, Miami 2020. Woo! I'm telling you, it'd be amazing. Oh, if San Antonio gets one, I got to do everything in my power to get to that one. I have to. Have to. So now we'll move on to the NFL. And I don't want to jinx myself, but allergies have been terrible for me this week. If I sound a little bit different, that's probably why. If I don't sound any different, and hopefully I didn't just point it out, then awesome. I feel, I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. Here we go. Moving on to the NFL. 
via the AP Associated Press, the Vikings will kick in another, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this, another $14 million to the project, most of which will be paid for 2,000 HDTV monitors to be installed in the venue. The Vikings and the NFL will now pay $566 million of the $1 billion structure, uh, which is crazy. But it's awesome to see that, hey, we're really trying to get this going. We're going to make this, you know, so modern. We're going to make this nice. Everybody's going to enjoy it from fans that are first row seats all the way to the back, you know, to the nosebleeds. We're going to make this a great experience for everybody. We're posting, you know, we're pushing all this money in so everybody can see everything. Other games going on. Viking Stadium is going to be really nice. It truly is. It, it really is. Uh, I like what the new stadiums are going for now. Um, you know, with Atlanta, Minnesota, M- Miami, what they're starting to do are amazing. I love the designs of everything. Uh, Carlos Dansby. Now, this is interesting. Now, we've all been hearing, uh, before I get to that story, we've all been hearing about the Patriots. You know, Tom Brady, he got the four-game suspension. Hey, I called it. Listen to the last week's show. I said four games. I'm just saying I called it. Uh <laughs> And, but, and also they got, you know, they lost the first round 2016 pick, uh, as well as the 2017, what, fourth, fifth rounder, and they were fined $1 million. So all of that, boom, gone. Honestly, and I want to get this point out real quick, because I, I didn't talk about it, because it happened after the show. I feel like that was the perfect thing. I, I think it was. Now, whether you like the rule or not, whether you feel like every quarterback should have the ball a different way or they shouldn't, they should all play by the same, you know, how it is, whatever. Look at the situation now. No more like, oh, this should have been like this. No, 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 no shoulda, coulda, woulda's. Granted, you know, the situation we're looking at right now, there has to be something that come down on Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. You look at it. And when you look at what they got from it, this could have been worse, guys. For all the Patriot fans complaining, for any other NFL fans that just feel like this was wrong, especially, I mean, when when this was released, Twitter went crazy saying harsh. Even people that may have not liked Brady or the Patriots, they were saying this was crazy, this was harsh, this was this and that, that, you know, really upset with it. This could have been worse. It honestly could have been worse. There were so many reports from you know, high highly qualified people that were had really good information on this, that this could have been a six, an eight, or an entire year long game suspension to Tom Brady. He got four games out of it, four out of what could have been six, eight, or an entire year. This was honestly the perfect thing. This was. One of Roger Goodell's, honestly, one of his best decisions he's made. Now, do I feel this was stupid uh, for this rule to happen? I think, I, I honestly think majority of the quarterbacks already have the ball in a different way. I, that's how I feel. Whether that's you know right or not, I mean, I haven't been on the actual field, the NFL field, and, and watched the player, but I feel like every quarterback truly does it. I think every quarterback likes the ball in a different way. I mean, you think about when you go pick up a football um, and obviously we don't all have the money to go buy a $90 NFL football so when you go to academy you go to whatever store target whatever you buy it from you go there and you you start feeling the you know the other footballs so, so you, that you can throw it better that feels comfortable for you don't you think the NFL quarterbacks they feel like okay this since it's just one football you know it, there's no other you know different type of you got a Nike football you have this football this and that there's only one football. Don't you think they probably aired out a different way to make it feel better for them? Now, that's why I feel. But it, this, my whole point was it could have been worse. It truly could have been worse. And people need to just be happy that it wasn't. Um, so I had a whole point going it. Anyway, so that that was you know, that's what happened. I want to get my point out on it because it happened after the show. Now... There's been multiple reports, and check this out. I mean, they just went after the Patriots. Now, whether this is true or they're trying to get something out of it or they're just saying this, I mean, a lot of these are facts too. So check this out. Carlos Dansby, linebacker, uh, he said in in his appearance on Pro Football Talk Live 
that he suspected the Patriots of wrongdoing in 2008. And see, and this is what I hate too. When things happened so long ago, even though 2008 doesn't feel like that long ago, it, it kind of is. Why do you say this now? Why do reports about anything, especially like when it comes to an NFL player, like, you know, when we saw with Jameis Winston about like the rape thing and all this other stuff and other NFL players or other athletes or whatever, all these things come out so late. And it's just like, why wasn't this reported then? But anyways, he suspected the the Patriots of doing wrongdoing in 2008. When the Cardinals visited New England and had trouble with their coach to helmet communication systems, Dansby wasn't the first to make such a claim against the Patriots. After the Jacksonville Jaguars lost to the Patriots in the playoffs following the 2005 season, then Jacksonville head coach Jack Del Rio said the, head, the headsets, quote, mysteriously malfunctioned. In 2007, Paul Zimmerman of Sports Illustrated reported that in a 2006 Lions Patriots game in New England, then Lions offensive coordinator Mike Martz had Detroit's offense off to a good start until he lost the ability to call plays because the communications system went out. According to that report, it happened to the Lions twice, both times in the middle of drives when the Lions were picking up steam. Zimmerman's report also quoted Bengals head coach Marvin Lewis as saying the same thing happened to the Lions that happened to the Bengals as well, saying, quote, yeah, I know, Lewis said, the headsets went out. It happened to me in Foxborough, too. Whoa. All of this just, boom, spilled the beans all right now. The thing is that it's just, it. this happened 2005, 2006. The report of Paul, for Paul Zimmerman came out in 2007, which 2006, 2007, hey, that's okay, that's fine. But these reports were in 2005, 2006, uh, and 2008. It is now 2015. We're almost halfway through 2015, and you are now hearing about this. Why? Why is this just now being released? Why wasn't this? Again, now I understand when it said the 2006 Lions versus Patriots game, it was then reported in 2007. That's that's understandable. That's understandable. I'm not, you know, that that's fine. But when you're waiting this long from Carl Zansberg saying in 2008, why why did you just now say it? And he might have said something back then, but it would obviously would just kind of die down. I mean, if this was such a big thing about a football being, you know, somewhat, you know, deflated or whatever, how much it was, that was, it was huge. It went viral, everything. Why wasn't that? That was, that was, that's much worse. That is much worse if the Patriots, you know, was were able to shut down a team's communications or, you know, did whatever they were able to listen to it and hear what happened or just straight up knock it out. Now that is, that's, whoo, you, you thought the Tom Brady thing was bad. Oh, you haven't seen nothing. You haven't seen nothing. So it's going to be interesting to see where this will go. I want to hear your guys' reactions to this, whether you're a Patriots fan or not. Follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24 seven. The link is down below. And, uh, I want to hear what you guys have to say. So we'll move on from that. And, uh, I'm excited. Now, the Chargers, as a huge San Diego Chargers fan, they opened up mini uh, offseason, or I can't even talk now, uh, rookie mini camp. And of course, Melvin Gordon was there. Everybody was saying he looked fast. I saw a quick little one and a half minute video that the Chargers posted on their app. He, he, he honestly looks better than every single running back out there. He, he truly does. Uh, Mike Gilkin. I hope I said his last name right, of UT San Diego, said the rookie corner uh, running back is already making an impression of uh, um, a day after signing his contract, even though teams were, aren't able to do too much resembling football at that moment. Saying, And this is what head coach uh, Mike McCoy said, quote, he did a nice job. We weren't really going full speed out there, just really an introduction to make sure everyone's got a hat on hat. <laughs> and uh, guys are running to the right spot. 
but he didn't make a few of those moves and cuts. You understand why we took him where we did. I love it. I absolutely freaking love it. I'm excited. I am truly excited. Now, I'm upset. I, I think I might have said this on my show. I, I might have said it to a friend, but I'm upset that Darrell Stuckey, I understand he's a special teams captain. Captain. He, he he wore 25, but I mean, we've seen other players that have worn a number for a while. Like, I mean, the the Titans punter or whatever, kicker, he wore eight for a while. He gave it to Marcus Mariota, star player. Melvin Gordon, star player as well. He wore 25. Let's get to 25. That's a, I don't know why that bothers me so much. I might have an OCD towards numbers or something, jersey numbers. Um, now, 28, there's nothing wrong with 28. 28 is a nice number, but I wanted him to wear 25. <laughs> I wanted him to wear 25. Darrell Stuckey said, no, not happening. I don't even know if he if he was even asked by Melvin Gordon. Um, but if, if he was really firm on just not giving up 25, that's you're, you're a special teams captain, dude. I mean, you're a special teams player. Come on. Give it to an offensive guy that's probably going to win rookie of the year and help boost this team to the playoffs because you were definitely not. No disrespect. Just saying. Unless you I – mean, you never know. He might cause, like, you know, that Giants 49ers uh, – that NFC Championship game back in like what 2012 special teams the guy knocked the ball out actually no did he even knock the ball out I think he just was it Stevie Johnson or who's now with the Chargers someone dropped the ball I don't know anyways y'all know what I'm saying he might make a impact let's move on forget all that nonsense uh after the first rookie mini camp Bucks GM Jason Lynch and head coach Lovey Smith both said both of them both of them <laughs> said Winston had exceeded expectations. Now books, uh, books, uh, Bucks rookie wide receiver Kenny Bell, who has been paired up with M- Winston as his uh, mini camp roommate, is raving about Winston's worth uh, work ethic. This is what he has to say. Quote: He's the best roommate I've ever had. He's one of the best teammates I've ever had. It's been phenomenal. We've been going out or going from si- about six a.m. to eight p.m. And then we get back to the hotel and he wants to study more. He's dedicated to his job. That's for sure. I like it. I like it. If, if, he's, if that's truly, I, I think Kenny Bell was a huge steal. How no one drafted him early. This guy, if you watch his tape at uh, Nebraska, and you don't even have to watch highlight films. If you watch the entire games or just offensive plays for Nebraska throughout his years that he was there. I believe he was the productive, most productive wide receiver in Nebraska. I believe history. I, I believe he broke a lot of records. This guy is an absolute dominant wide receiver. Um, Buccaneers got a steal for him, and you're going to hear a lot of Winston to Bell. You think you're going to hear a lot of Winston to Mike Evans and, and Vincent Jackson? You're going to hear the exact same thing, if not more, to Kenny Bell. This guy is a workhorse out there, and it's going to be exciting to see them paired up Winston he's got receivers he's got plenty of receivers to throw to now whether that offensive line and a running game gets established and gets better that's going to take a few you know a few weeks and, and some time but once they get that they're on a roll and now if I was the Buccaneers I don't know their salary cap situation but if I was the Buccaneers I'd do anything and everything to make my pitch and and, and get some options open to trade for Adrian Peterson for, of the Vikings I'm just saying you have I, now, I, 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 this is a huge long shot, but if that happened, if Adrian Peterson went to the Buccaneers, whoo, whoo, I'm just going to let that just, look, just you know, sit in your head for a little bit and just imagine what that offense could really be like with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers having Adrian Peterson in the backfield, the top big wide receivers. I mean, the starting three wide receivers, if Kenny Bell moves up to the third wide receiver, you have... Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans, both at 6'5", if not 6'6". Six, six. Kenny Bell is like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I mean, that's good enough. Woo, all you got to do is just lob that ball up there, watch him get it, hand it off to Adrian Peterson, a few play action, boom, bada bing. You got yourself offense. You got yourself some points. Woo, hire me, Tampa Bay. Hire me. I'll coach that team. Uh, lastly, to finish off this show, wide receiver Santana Moss was an afterthought in Washington Redskins offense last season playing 10 games and catching a miserable 10 passes his least productive year of his career since playing only five games as a Jets rookie back in 2001 but Moss said this week that quote I've got another year in me I'm a free agent right now you know how they do us old guys 
I'm going uh, I'm going on my 15th year. Right now, my agent is talking to some teams to see what's going to be my best scenario. Right now, I'm just chilling, enjoying life, and enjoying th- this off time. That's what he said to Inside the U, uh, Miami, and stuff like that. Now, he said he ideally he, he said ideally he wants to return to the Redskins despite last year's limited uh, role, and uh, also head coach Jay Gruden didn't rule that out earlier in the off season either. He said he would bring him back. Washington did draft two wide receivers, though. So that might leave Santana Moss just out of it. I mean, because you, if you added some more depth to your wide receiver position, Moss was Santana Moss wasn't really – it wasn't effective at all last season, but you brought in two other rookies. Why would you bring Santana Moss back? You know, especially if he's really wanting to get at least, you know, a few more planes, you know, a lot more catches than just 10, then – Washington's really not the best spot for him. Now, moving back to Miami, or you know, if he still has a home there, going to Miami, playing for the Dolphins, I don't know if that's an option, but if it is, why not? You know, you're at the end of the, your stretch, uh, tor- you know, towards your NFL career. Finish off where you started. Now, he didn't start in Miami for the Dolphins, but he started, of course, at the U at Miami University for the, hur- the for the Hurricanes. Why not go back there? That way, you can also help out. You know. Go talk to the team for the Hurricanes every now and then throughout the season. You're there where they play. They're, or they're at where you play. Um, and really be a part of that expansion for what the Dolphins are doing with their new stadium, you know, new life uh, at, at Miami. Why not go back? Why not go back and, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can. Play with Ryan Tannehill. They need some wide receiver depth. I know they have Jarvis Landry. They have... Uh, you know, a young rookie, you can teach him up. I don't know. I feel like it'd be a solid spot. But we'll just have to see where he goes. I wouldn't mind him going to San Diego either just to have more depth because we get injured a lot throughout the year. So come over so you can take over somebody. Um, but, yeah, that was it. Also, one quick note. As you all know, I did an interview with David Porter, former TCU wide receiver. I was under the impression at first I thought he had already signed with the Dolphins. I completely forgot that. Teams do tryouts for players. I, I don't know why that slipped my mind. It just did. Um, it was a tryout player for the Dolphins. Didn't make it, but it happened for a reason. In case you guys didn't see my tweet earlier, again, follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7. He signed a three-year deal a couple a few days or a couple days after uh, not making it on the roster for the Dolphins. Signed a three-year deal with the Denver Broncos. So he's going to be playing with Peyton Manning. Or however long, I don't think Peyton's got three years in him, but at least for one year, he'll be playing with Peyton Manning and, and learning from those receivers and Demarius Thomas and a few others. So very excited for him, for David Porter. So again, if you go back and you watch, or excuse me, you listen to the interview, um, and it now on the title, it says Denver Broncos, but I put in the description at the time he was with the Miami Dolphins. Um, so you just have to, Kind of work with it there. But exciting news for David Porter. Again, a three-year deal with the Denver Broncos. Exciting for him. Congratulations. And uh, got a new home in Denver. It's going to be hard because as a Chargers fan, I'm going to be rooting for him to, you know, be productive throughout the year. But when he plays those two games against the Chargers, I'm sorry. Uh, Just, you know, sorry. Not going to happen. Oh, but at least he'll be going against Jason Verrett. That'd be kind of cool. Lined up against him. But anyways, that's the end of today's show. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this a like. And share it with your friends and family, whether you're listening on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, whatever it may be. Be sure to tweet it out, share it, Pinterest, whatever else, social media things you can share it to, Instagram, everything. Uh, I will be back next Saturday morning. As always, guys, God first, God bless. I'm out. Peace.